Well, hello, my friends, and happy Sunday, and welcome to this week's edition of My Journey with Jesus. My name is Dave Little, and I am so pleased that you all have tuned in to this week's devotional video as we continue on our journey through the book of Psalms. And in fact, we're on a journey through Psalm 119 in particular. Today, we will move on in the discussion. As I mentioned at the beginning of Psalm 119, it's a long one, 22 stanzas. And initially I had hoped to knock out a couple of stanzas each week and get through Psalm 119 in, in you know, maybe three, four weeks. But, uh, but what I've discovered in my reflections is that each one of these stanzas is very special. And each one of these stanzas is infused with great truths. So there will be no timeline for getting through Psalm 119. Instead, I am going to savor each stanza and reflect on the truths that each stanza presents in God's time. Uh, this week, we're going to explore verses 33 through 40. This would be the fifth stanza of Psalm 119. And there is some awesome stuff in this psalm. For folks who haven't been watching each of these videos in detail, uh, let's re recap where we have been briefly over the past couple weeks. Two weeks ago, we talked about diligence, following God with our whole heart, and the stumbling block, the, the opposite of diligence, which is compartmentalization. When we hold back from God in specific areas, we have hidden sins or, or hidden areas of our lives that we try to separate from our walk with him. And that was a tough, tough truth for me to, uh, to grapple with. Uh, last week, we talked about mourning over sin and how to open our hearts before God to expose those areas, those compartments, and let him do his healing work in our entire lives. And that brings us to today. Uh, verses 33 through 40 this week were a great blessing to me. I've, I've called this rowing to freedom, and, and we'll see why as we get into the video. Uh, but this stanza focuses on the responses of the psalmist, in particular the emotional responses of the psalmist who receives the word and also provides some practical tips for application. So with that, let's jump in. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes, and I shall keep it to the end. Give me understanding, and I shall keep your law. Indeed, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me walk in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. So this stanza begins with the psalmist yearning for his life to be transformed by God's word. In the first three verses, he presents three requests to God to unleash the power of his truth upon the life of the psalmist. Teach me. Give me understanding. Make me walk in the path. The psalmist gets it. We can only follow God by the power of God, not on our own strength. I was certainly convicted by this last week, as, as many of us are, as we struggle to be obedient to God on the basis of our own strength and our own willpower and our own cleverness. But here in today's verses, we see the psalmist opening his life to God's power to provide the wisdom and the understanding in order to keep on the path that God has called us to travel. We'll see this throughout the stanza as the psalmist continues to plead with God to incline his heart to God's testimonies and establish God's word in the life of his people. As Psalm 119 continues, we see the psalmist begin to explore some practical outworkings of God's word in his life. Incline my heart to your testimonies and not to covetousness. Turn my eyes away from looking at worthless things and revive me in your way. The first request from the psalmist in, in this section is for God to incline his heart. And I spent some time this week examining the word incline. 
Incline is most often used to describe a physical posture, leaning in, positioning the body in such a way as to draw closer to something of importance. Incline brings to mind what we observe with plants. If you put a plant in a place where the sunshine always comes from the same direction, then this plant isn't going to grow straight up. It's going to grow toward the sunlight. The plant inclines itself in the direction of the source of life. This is the attitude, the posture, that we should take in relationship to the Word of God. Our hearts, our minds, our physical bodies being drawn to the Word of God throughout our lives. Except that really we don't. In fact, we know from reading the Bible and just by observing human nature around us that the Word of God is not the natural inclination of this following fallen humanity. We don't have our lives drawn to the Word of God. In fact, we learn in Jeremiah 17, 9, the desperate heart of man is deceitful above all. The heart is more deceitful than all else and is desperately sick. Who can understand it? That's the natural state of man. But the plea of the psalmist is for God to incline his heart toward God's testimony. And that's a request that runs contrary to our human nature. And it's a request that should be the constant plea of all of us who want to walk with God. Uh, the psalmist goes on in this section to call out a specific sin, the sin of covetousness. This seems to be the natural inclination of his heart, instead of the psalmist fixing his heart on God's word. The psalmist recognizes his need to turn his eyes away from things that have no worth. Turn my eyes away from looking at worthless things, and instead incline his heart to the word of God, with the end result being that his way will be revived by God's word and that he will walk in God's righteousness. Just last week when we discussed mourning over sin and talked about Pastor Colin Smith and his principles, and, and Pastor Colin encouraged us to name specific sins, humble ourselves before God with those areas of our lives and reflect upon the cross as the pathway to forsaking those sins. And here we see the psalmist doing exactly that and laying open his heart of covetousness for God to put that process in action. So, now that the psalmist has recognized the path forward, he finishes off the stanza by reflecting upon some of his emotional reactions to the message. Establish your word to your servant, who is devoted to fearing you, Turn away my reproach, which I dread, for your judgments are good. Behold, I long for your precepts. Revive me in your righteousness. And, and as we read through the stanza from start to finish, all eight verses here, we see the emotional responses of the psalmist as they are weaved in throughout the verses. The psalmist commits to observe the word with his whole heart. He takes delight in the word and he longs to learn more and this brings to mind one of my favorite verses in the entire book of psalms which we find in psalm 42 as the deer pants for the water brooks so my soul pants for you O god my soul thirsts for god for the living god when shall i come and appear before god I've always loved this picture, man yearning for the word of God like a thirsty deer running to the brook. When shall I meet with God? It's clear from, from this verse that meeting with God is the most exciting moment of his day. Uh, you know, when we think about the most exciting moments of our day, what do we think about? Hey, what time does the Buckeyes game start? I know on Saturday, that's, that's you know, first thing I'm up in the morning and, and you know, check the schedule. And when, when can we sit down and watch the Buckeyes game? I love my Buckeyes, but that's not the attitude of the psalmist here. The attitude is, when can I come and meet with God? At the same time, the psalmist points out a more challenging 
emotion here in verse 39, the dreaded moment of reproach. Sometimes the word of God will challenge our heart, challenge our lives, point us to the compartments of our lives that we hide from God. The word doesn't always tell us what we want to hear, and that can be painful. But it's still something that we need in our lives for our own growth. If you've uh, followed the channel over the past year, you know it's been a rocky road for me physically. In January, I broke my foot. In April, I had surgery for a detached retina. And when I finally made it back to the gym in July, I blew out my left shoulder trying to do push-ups. And as a result of all of that, I also managed to gain close to 20 pounds since the beginning of the year. And so now I'm on the path back to health. I hired a new trainer. I started a nutritional program. I'm back at the gym three or four days a week. Going to get there this afternoon to rehab my shoulder and, and build some muscle to promote my weight loss. It is a painful process. Going to the gym is not fun. I work hard, and by the end of the workout, I have a lot of soreness. I've got, like I, like I enjoy saying to my wife, I've got pain in places where I didn't even know I had places. But deep down inside, I recognize that there's benefit in these workouts. Uh, so far, I've lost about five pounds. My energy's better. The pain and soreness are beginning to show some benefits. And this is the process we go through when we examine our lives in the light of God's word. No matter how much the psalmist dreads the reproach of God in verse 39, and no matter how much I dread going to the gym and, and doing, these, doing these, uh, these workouts, by the time we get to verse 40, the psalmist is longing, longing to learn the precepts of God in newer and deeper ways. All right. So to wrap things up, let's review what we have learned from verses 33 through 40. Uh, at the beginning of this process, we open our hearts to the word. We ask God to teach us, to give us understanding, to incline our hearts to his word, like flowers to the sunlight, or like the thirsty deer comes to the stream. We need to open our hearts to the word. Uh, secondly, we apply the Word of God to our lives. We identify and confess the specific areas where our lives are not in conformity to His Word. Today, it was covetousness. Uh, for all of us, it's something different, but we all have our little compartments in our lives that we want to cling to and we want to conceal from God and, and, we, and we don't want to you know, don't want those things to be shaken up in our, in our lives. Uh, but as we let God's word work in our lives and apply God's word to our lives, as the psalmist did, uh, we saw the psalmist ask specifically to turn his eyes away from worthless things. So we open the word, we apply the word, and finally we rejoice in the power of God's word acting in our lives. Open, apply, rejoice. That spells or, O-A-R. <laughs> That's a clever little mnemonic that God laid on my heart this week. And so the whole, uh, the whole notion of the, of the or and, and the disciples straining at the oars in order to pursue God, if we have our oars working properly, if we are rowing in the living water of the words of God, God will empower us to row in the right direction in our journey with him. So that is where we will um, wrap things up for today. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, excuse me. I was fighting it, tried to get through the end, but it uh, didn't happen. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave those in the comments section down below. Uh, it is a blessing to me when folks leave their comments just so that I know that folks are listening and it's worthwhile to uh, keep putting the word out there for folks to, uh, to listen. Uh, so please feel free to leave your questions and comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. Uh, not to 
promote my ego, but that will promote this video in the search algorithms of, of other YouTube users who are surfing around looking for inspirational videos like this, devotions on a weekly basis. If you want to hear more from the channel, you can hit the little subscribe key down below and you'll get notified whenever new content is posted. And that is where we will wrap things up for today. I will be out of town next week, so there will not be an episode on the channel. But uh, good Lord willing and the creek don't rise, we'll be back in two weeks with another episode of My Journey with Jesus as we continue our journey through Psalm 119. And until then, may God bless you all and go in peace.